what's the first question? Um, um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you see the relationship between art and activism for all our poets? Yeah. How do I see the relationship between art and activism? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's vital. Like, both go hand in hand. I think activism is completely amplified by the arts um, on a really accessible level of, you know, if you look at, like, current protests, I think more people get excited about people's signs than the actual <laughs> issues, which is maybe another conversation. Um, but, but yeah, but I guess like resistance mo movements from the start of time have had creative and wonderful artistic outputs that have only amplified the oppressions of the minorities that are usually protested. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking from experience of being from the kind of black community and I think all black art is built out of oppression, <laughs> um, which in itself is a form of de facto activism, I guess. So that's, that's my answer on it all. Yes, go on. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't really want to follow that. I think you summed it up. No, I mean, I think you're right. Art, art and activism are, are so kind of inextricably linked. I mean, both of them really come from emotional connection and emotional charge. I think sometimes art is just a more sort of palatable route into change than the term activism seems. Um, and I think I've, I've always kind of, I call it temporary epiphany syndrome. Um, where you go and you, you view a piece of art and it, it motivates you and it moves you and you feel really inspired to do something but it doesn't give you that route, it doesn't give you the path to then follow so for like the night or whatever you're really like, you're all like fired up and you're like let me change this thing but you don't have the pathway so I think the two need to be uh, merged, you need to be given the activist route to follow after experiencing the art, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I think they they can both exist separately. I mean, you can you can have activism, you can have marches, like you said. Um, doesn't need art, but what you remember is the placards, and it needs to get the conversations going. And similarly, art you can have landscapes and portraits and all of that, which are beautiful and absolutely valid in their own right. But then there's pieces of art that really stick in your mind because they've pushed a boundary or they've started a conversation that has, you know, moved people. I mean, like Picasso's Guernica. No one is ever going to forget that painting or, or the war it was associated with or um, Tony Walsh's poem after the Manchester bombing. I mean, that's the, the epitome of art and activism sticking together and those are the moments that I think stick in people's mind when the two serve to propel each other to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what um, Imogen was saying um, links to the, the next question, which is what are some of the current issues based particularly around gender, but maybe some other things that you are passionate about that you're thinking um, about at the moment, if anyone knows? Um, for me, it's gender discrimination in the workplace. Um, I don't know if you saw in the news that the gender pay gap is not improving. <laughs> So I think it's uh, less than half of the companies that reported last year have narrowed their gender gap. Uh, I work in a really male-dominated industry, so it's a struggle all the time. When I first joined the company, one of my first experiences of the head of the company was he went around the bank of desks, shook hands with all the men, was like, oh, well done, thank you for your contribution, it's really appreciated. And then he got to the female financial controller and was like, oh, Zing, what a lovely blouse you have on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, is, he is the epitome of the old dinosaur, and lots of people think that that's like a pass, a free pass, and I, I don't think it is. Like he, uh, Again, first week in the office, I went to put my mug in the dishwasher. Oh, Chloe, are you looking after the boys in your team? <laughs> So loads of people would be like, yes, you know, and I was like, no, why? <laughs> he was like, um, so the, the, the gender pay gap thing is mostly because lots of companies keep women in lower down roles and that keeps the issue going because it's really hard when you are the receptionist or the secretary or, you know, the office manager to stand up to that head of your business. So um, 
I'm actually one of the, not at the top, but like the highest um, level women in my company, so I feel like it is my duty to call out that kind of shit because, number one, I'm sick of it and I don't want to take it anymore. And, you know, um, I feel brave enough to do it because I've had my own struggles with sexual harassment and stuff and standing up is the best thing that you can do. And also it's to enable those young girls, you know, the young interns who come along and get some really inappropriate stuff said to them. If somebody else is saying, no, 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 hopefully they will have the guts to say it too. So that's my main bugbear at the moment. Um, oh gosh, I think I spend most of my life thinking about everything that's wrong in the world and end up having terrible headaches. Um, <laughs> but um, I think the thing that I think most about just because of my work is the kind of issues that we have in education. Um, schools are very quick to exclude young people, um, young people that fit into certain demographics, usually male and black or female and black. Um, and I think that's a big disparity that ultimately results in young people having their education ripped away from them, which is a right. And we have a school exclusion to prison pipeline, which is a huge issue. Um, but I think uh, what all, all the other, so that's that's a big one. But then the other two things that I think we're just so the the conversation is just not moving forward, and we're just so it's not being spoken about enough is that we are still living within a terribly hostile environment that is getting worse for people of colour and immigrants into this country. Um, and I genuinely fear for what that's going to look like in the next few years um, once we do the whole... You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be sage. So, um, but yeah, well, once we do that whole thing, like how much worse it's going to get, and that kind of scares me. Um, and also our lack of solidarity with our trans brothers and sisters, I think is still terrible. Um, I went to a, um, oh gosh, this is so scary in case anyone in the room went to it, but I went to a feminist leadership thing recently. Um, and the, the workshop was a whole day long and did not mention gender non-binary or trans people at all the whole day. I was like, and everyone's whacking out intersectional left, right and centre and I was like, damn, you're missing a big, big chunk of uh, feminism there. But um, yeah, so I think those, those are my big issues that I think about a lot. Well, <laughs> I don't know, like you say, there are, there are, there are so many issues. Uh, it's really hard to kind of prioritise one, but I suppose if we're returning to kind of gender-based issues in some sense, um, I think male expression is really important to me just now, simply because I think it, it's come again from working at this night shelter where the men arriving there have experienced the most incredible levels of emotional trauma um, and they just don't know how to speak about it and they, I watch them kind of chastise each other for, for showing emotion. Uh, one, one man, well boy really, he's only 17, but he made the mistake of saying that he, that he cries for his mother and the other men kind of turned on him because this was not allowed and there's this whole facade of, of, of strength and masculinity and manliness which is so detrimental and I feel like we keep sort of flagging it up but not really doing much about it and I have so many male friends suffering from the most crippling anxiety but still feeling unable to do much about it or feeling like it's not important and I just feel it's something we need to, to delve into more rather than kind of sort of scratching the surface of it I suppose because um, it, 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 it is a catalyst for so much other wrongness in society um, yeah. so I think that should be it should be sorted <laughs> this evening. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, on that, I was kind of, that made me think of, um, I'm sure a lot of you would have heard um, Women of the World Festival at South Bank. Um, one thing that I've been kind of wondering last year is that there used to be Being a Man Festival, and I, tr I don't know how to find out about it, but they didn't do it, like, the last year it was meant to be in November, I think, and I think that it, I think that came out of Women of the World Festival, and that has been a really important thing. And I think connected to that, um, it, it would be such a shame if it did because wow, it's just growing and growing, and and it's a shame 
that that isn't and definitely yeah there needs to be more of that kind of thing um i recently went to a book launch um for um a book called 84 which was um by um published by verve press and um that was um really important to kind of get conversations particularly about male suicide um, but also more, wide, more widely about um, vulnerability and grief and um, yeah things like that um, to kind of get those conversations going it was such a moving event and yeah kind of linking again that kind of arts and activism thing as well um, Can I just yeah. say that the title 84 is because 84 men put themselves up yeah Thank you. Yeah, um, and on that note, are there any other further questions from the audience? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious what feminism means to each of you. Mm, big question. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> uh, I think it's just all I want is equality and. Equality doesn't mean necessarily, sorry, it means everybody being treated the same within their difference, basically. A accepting that everybody is completely unique and that it has bugger all to do with gender, actually. But women have been oppressed for a long time, and people identify as female, and therefore feminism, is, to me, is giving them a boost so that we can try and redress the balance whilst not you know, as we keep talking tonight about men, it's not about crushing men. It's just about bringing things up to a level, I think. Yeah. I'll get back to you in a week. Yeah. <laughs> what does feminism mean to me? Um, I was brought up by a single mother, so I've never not been a feminist or been in a feminist space. Um, so, like... A lot, like, like I've been in spaces recently where people have been like, oh, I feel really uncomfortable saying the term that I'm a feminist, which I totally understand, but for me, I find that really difficult to get my head around because I've, uh, the, it's just such a, it's just such a part of who I am and what what life is to me. Um, but I think, in a more critical sense, I think that um, it's important for me that feminism isn't just like a hashtag and it isn't just a commodity that's just kind of become really palatable and like really. Um, really attractive in ASOS and Urban Outfitters and places like that because, you know, hashtag feminist is like really cool and that's great on the one hand but like, you know, is it is it real? Is it underrooted by I have feminism for people that look like me but also people that don't look like me and people that um, I might not understand what their existence is but I'm still going to root for them anyway so I think that's what feminism is to me. This is big feminism. I don't know. I think it. I mean, it means kind of so much to me at so many different times. Uh, right now, it's taking me until now to read um, "Nobody Told Me" by Holly McNish, um, which, if you haven't read it, is this incredible poetic anthology about um, pregnancy and parenthood. And I swear, like as of today, feminism just means like women are fucking magic like it's it's insane like just it's just no um, it's just respect for 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 everybody and and everybody's different scenarios it's empowering people for who they are and encouraging equality and just like enough of all this shit and just 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 leveling the playing field and encouraging everyone i think yeah Um, so I think um, we're probably going to be having to get out here quite soon, so I'd like to thank um, all the poets for participating. <laughs> and um, yeah, once again, um, thank you all for coming here and being here, and um, please sign up to the mailing list if you want to find out about future events. And we've got um, a, a few other things coming up, sort of festival plans and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in finding out about that, that'd be great. Um, again, there's a few more fl 